Good morning, dear saints. Uh, good afternoon, actually. A little after lunch today, and our uh, daily prayer for today is uh, 296, daily prayer for noon. Also, a blessed Memorial Day to you as we remember all of those who have fought, who have died, who have saved us and served our country and our freedoms. We remember those today as well. Our uh, Order of worship from the hymnal, Daily Prayer, for noon. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, at noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Listen to the words of the psalmist for today, and remember when we talk about um, the psalmist, and we talk about how God speaks to us through His Word, listen to who is driving the verbs in the uh, psalm today. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob whose hope is the Lord God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith from afar, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Did you hear it? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He continues to do the work. And when he gets to the end and he talks about the wicked, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Because the wicked push back against God. They deny his gifts. They walk away from faith. And because of that, they are sentenced to hell, separated from him. Not because God isn't merciful, but because they're hard-hearted and they don't want anything to do with God's gifts. Well, the gospel reading for today is in the gospel of Luke, chapters 18 and rolling into 19. St. Luke writes this. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging and hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people who saw it gave praise to God. He entered Jericho and passing through. And there was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich, and was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not see because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass by. But when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw him, they all grumbled. He has gone to be the guest of that man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded any one of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Well, dear saints, you 
can't read that story of Zacchaeus without having the children's song go through your head. Zacchaeus was a a wee little man. A wee little man was he. And you have sung it and hopefully taught it to your children and your grandchildren as well. Uh, It's interesting in the text it says he was small of stature. It's almost trying to be politically correct there. Zacchaeus was short. He was a little man and he couldn't see over the crowd when Jesus passed by. So he ran into the sycamore tree and climbed up so that he might get a glimpse of Jesus. As Jesus was going by, he called to Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house this day. And Jesus was criticized for that. How dare he? Doesn't he know who he is? He's going to be in that man's house? And somehow they didn't think as much of Jesus because Jesus thought a lot of Zacchaeus. Remember at the end it said Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came to seek and save Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was lost in his, in his job, in his occupation. Lost in his wealth and his money. And when Jesus comes to him and he hears the words of Jesus, he's converted. He's changed. Completely changed. Zacchaeus says, if I've defrauded anyone, I will give it back fourfold. And they grumbled against him. Zacchaeus was changed, and when he was changed, now Zacchaeus was a new man. Now Zacchaeus was doing things for the right reasons. You see, a lot of times when we look at people from the outside, we wonder why they're doing what they're doing. And there is a difference in the actions that we have. If someone is doing something, if they are If they are not, and we'll just pick on the top ones that the Baptists struggle with. If someone is not drinking or gambling or dancing, they must be a good Christian. But what's the reason for not doing those things? If if you're not doing those things and you're trying to keep the law because by not doing those things, then you will be saved, well, you're still on the wrong track. But if you're not doing those things because you know that there could be damaging to your faith, you know that that might not be the greatest place for you to be. If you're doing those things out of a response to the gospel of Jesus Christ, now you're doing those things for the right reason. You see, Zacchaeus didn't give back to the poor or give back to those who he defrauded four times more. He wasn't trying to seek Jesus' approval. Zacchaeus' heart was changed, and because of that, it changed who he was and what he did, and he wanted to make it right. You see, when we look at Zacchaeus, he is the key to us to see. It is a changed heart that elicits a reaction. The apple tree produces apples, the changed pagan produces good fruit produces a life of faith that trusts in Jesus. And that's what happened to Zacchaeus. In the uh, Treasury of Daily Prayer, there's a couple of good quotes that deal with this conversion and what it means and how we live it out. The first one is from Augustine. It says, True satisfaction is to cut off the causes of sin, that is, to put the flesh to death. Likewise, to hold the flesh in check, not in order that eternal punishment may be paid for, but so that the flesh may not be drawn into sin. Did you hear it? It's a response. Our life in Christ is a response to the good news, to the forgiveness that Jesus has given to us. And because of that, we recognize things that would cause us to sin and we stay away from them. And there's another one. This is from John Chrysostom, the golden mouth, a tremendous preacher. He says, In the heart, contrition. In the mouth, confession, and in the work, entire humility. I'll read it once more. In the heart, contrition, sorrow over sin. In the mouth, confession, that we confess the Apostles' Creed or Jesus is Lord. And in the 
work, entire humility, doing the best you can without looking for praise or honor, just doing the job because doing your vocation is a great glory to God all on its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our catechetical review today, because it is Memorial Day and we remember all of those who have died serving our country, we go to the fourth commandment, honoring those in authority over us. Honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not despise or anger our parents or other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. And on this Memorial Day, hear the words of the hymn 965, God Bless Our Native Land. God bless our native land, firm may she ever stand through storm and night. When the wild tempests rave, rulers of wind and wave, do thou our country save by thy great might. So shall our prayer arise to God above the skies, on him we wait. Thou who art ever nigh, guarding with watchful eye, to thee aloud we cry, God save the state. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God of hosts, stretch forth your almighty arm to strengthen and protect those who serve in the armed forces of our country. Support them in times of war and in times of peace. Keep them from all evil, giving them courage and loyalty. Grant that in all things they may serve with integrity and honor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, protector of all, we give thanks to you this day for those mighty men and women who have fought defending the liberty of our republic. We pray, dear Father, that you would continue to be with their families that mourn their loss. We thank you, Father, for their service to the freedoms that we have. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all afflictions and to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, dear saints, a blessed Memorial Day to you. I pray that you have a great day, enjoy the holiday, and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. One final announcement, uh, tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, where we generally offer Holy Communion from 10 until noon, I will not be here. I have um, our, our Black Hill Circuit pastors get together once a month or so, and we're getting together tomorrow morning. So I won't be able to be here for Holy Communion. We will offer it Wednesday after evening prayer and Thursday after uh, late in the afternoon from 4 to 6. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.